Throwing back to the origins of your career, how did the passion for dubbing come about in your life? Um, I think if I really think about it, I started getting interested in voice work when I was a little kid. Um, the Simpsons and South Park were like really big shows, um, but a lot of kids weren't allowed to watch them, but I was. And so often what I do is I would watch the episode on the Friday and then on Monday morning I'd come to school and I would perform the episode for all my friends who weren't allowed to watch it. And so I do all the different voices and I developed a pretty good memory for memorizing the, the, the stories and the lines. So I think that was kind of the beginning of it um, for me. <laughs> my dog decides he needs to play with his B right now. <laughs> Among all the roles that you've had the chance to play throughout your career, is there any particular role you're most fond of and why? Um, one of the roles that I'm most fond of is Lance in Nexo Nights. That was my first sort of really big role where I was one of the main characters on the show. And I got to learn so much working on that. There were so many incredible established actors on that show and it was just such an incredible school, schooling, basically, to, um, to be able to be in that room and work with those people and learn from watching them and from listening to them and talking with them. And it really um, encouraged you to, to try things and take big swings and up your game. It was really, really, really wonderful. And we got to do a whole bunch of them. And I got to play a whole bunch of fun other side characters on there. That was really fun, getting to play the kind of wry um, guy on the team who doesn't want to try very hard because everything seems to come so easily to him. But there's a heart under there, which was a lot of fun to sort of get to explore that. The, the cocky guy who thinks that he's got it all figured out, but there's maybe more to him than just that. So that was, that's one that I'll always carry with me in a special place. If you had to give some advice to people who want to pursue a, pursue a dubbing career or a voice career, what kind of advice would you give them? I would say make big choices, don't be afraid to play, and you need to be seeing the action in your head when you're performing it. It's not just about saying the lines, you need to be imagining it and picturing it in your head. So if a character is running and jumping over a ravine, you need to be seeing that in, your, in your, your mind's eye while you're performing it. You need to have some sense of the space and that's all going to inform the, the vocal performance that you then give. So making sure that you're picturing it in your head as you're performing it, you're not just worrying about how the lines sound, you're, you're, you're feeling it and you're believing it and you know what your objective is, that I think is, is a really critical part of, of the work that took me a while to learn. Um, so that would be a, a piece of advice that I would have. Can you tell us a little bit about your role in Netflix's Sonic Prime? Well, in Sonic Prime, I play Shadow the Hedgehog and Big the Cat, and it's been a joy getting to do both of them, partly because in every session, I get to have the, the darker sort of grittier stuff with Shadow, and then I get to have like the lighter, more fun stuff with Big. So I always get uh, both ends of the spectrum every time I get to go work on, on Sonic Prime. It's been a real treat getting to be part of such a cool project. It's been around for a long time. I grew up playing Sonic myself, so it was really, really uh, exciting getting to jump into those characters and, and that world. And playing characters that have been around for a while and have been embodied by a few other actors before is a really interesting challenge because, you know, everybody's always gonna have their favorites, of course, and that's great, but a lot of these characters you know, nobody bats an eye when uh, an, another performance of Hamlet happens or something like that because it's a, it's a new interpretation and the core is going to be there, but everybody gets to put their own spin on it. And so I've had a really, really wonderful time getting to sort of um, put my little fingerprint on, on these characters for, for my time. And, and that's, been, that's been really, really fun for me. Plus, my nephews are, are into it, which is always a big plus when when you've got uh, young people in your life who think that uh, what you're doing is, is cool and fun. So that's been, that's been a real treat too. Um, I'm really, really, really proud of the show. I think it turned out fantastic. The cast is incredible. 
the the writing has been awesome the direction has been great the animation is outstanding and i'm very very excited for people to see um the uh, the next piece of it that's that's coming out soon so um yeah it's uh it's been a joy getting to work on sonic prime what can i tease about my next projects well most of the time they have us uh, under lock and key with uh, with non-disclosure agreements and stuff like that but I do have some really fun stuff coming up um, in a few different genres, not necessarily just animation. So that's that's been exciting to get to do. And uh, yeah, I get to play around with a few different types of characters that I've never really gotten to do before. So that's been a, that's been an exciting an exciting little run for the last little bit. So I can't wait to share all of that with everybody once uh, once it's available. And hopefully I get to keep um, doing more and more stuff because it's, uh, it's, it's really wonderful work and I'm very grateful that I get to do it.